As you know, when it comes to energy, we hear a lot of politicians and vested interests tell us how cheap renewable energy is compared to coal, gas or nuclear energy. They're talking about solar and wind, and what they always ignore in the conversations and calculations is that first, for these variable or unreliable forms of energy, they are not always there when you want them. So on top of their cost, you have to add the cost of another backup source of power, and at the very least, a few hours storage in batteries or pumped hydro or the like. And even then, you have to add on transmission infrastructure to link up all these renewable installations across a vast area. Australia has already invested up to $100 billion in this stuff. Our power prices have gone up and is now planning to invest perhaps that again in the next decade. And the bottom line is, is that we'll all pay for those investments through our power bills, which is why you won't hear Anthony Albanese say this anymore. Households will benefit by $275 on average. Reducing power prices by $275. That will reduce power prices by $275. Prices by $275. $275. $275 a year. $275. $275 a year. $275 a year. $275 a year. Yeah, the costs are going to keep going up, aren't they? And we still won't be able to guarantee energy security or reliability. This disaster is only going to get worse, I fear. The coalition, which was way too timid on this stuff in government, signed up to net zero, of course, ruled out nuclear, just went with the renewable energy zeitgeist. Well, it's now prepared to look seriously at nuclear energy. But have a listen to what Labor's climate and energy minister had to say about that. Their answer to rising energy prices is to put more of the most expensive form of energy, nuclear, into the system. That's their answer. Genius. That's the Leader of the Opposition's Genius. big announcement today, that he supports the most expensive form of energy available, nuclear energy. Well done. Well done. That, ladies and gentlemen, is what you call denial, climate cost denial. Every five years, the International Energy Agency looks at projected costs of generating electricity. And here's the most recent report from two years ago. It says that nuclear thus remains the dispatchable low-carbon technology with the lowest expected costs in 2025. See, nuclear is expensive to construct and install, but plants last 60 years or even more more than three times the lifespan of wind turbines or solar installations. And if they're installed close to retired coal plants, for instance, they don't need expensive transmission infrastructure either. The report went on to say that electricity produced from nuclear long-term operation by lifetime extension is highly competitive and remains not only the least cost option for low carbon generation when compared to building new power plants, but for all power generation across the board. There you go. They're saying it's even cheaper than renewables. That's the International Energy Agency. Let me bring in the former chief executive of the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organisation, A.D. Patterson. A.D., thanks for joining us. Um, you've been looking at this forever, I suppose. Does that not surprise you that nuclear actually, a long term, turns out to be very cost competitive? I think it's something that all energy specialists know around the world. Uh, the challenge we face in Australia is that we measure the electrons before they reach the fence, and we call that the levelised cost of electricity. But actually, the cost that is most important to the consumer is the cost in your pocket. And so people hide the new grid that will have to be built. They hide the batteries that might be needed for storage. They hide the fact that you've got to keep building wind turbines, uh, you know, far beyond the capacity of the grid as a whole. And as a result of that, um, we are making really bad policy choices that will affect generations of Australians. And these are not small factors, right? These are the big cost inhibitors for renewable energy. The transmissions costs are in the tens of billions of dollars that are already outlined, but also battery storage is horrendously expensive. It is. It's very, very expensive. And in fact, if you read the AEMO report, 
on batteries. They claim that they last for 25 years, whereas the Renewable Energy Lab in the United States that did actual testing of batteries found they lasted between seven and 10 years. Now, that's a massive disc discrepancy. So the problem is, is that we are doing economic planning, but we're not doing physics and engineering-based planning. We need to know about how the energy system is going to work in the real world. And I believe that it is very clear now that small modular reactors retrofitted onto coal sites is the way to go in Australia. Yeah, this is such an important point because there's a lot of land and degraded land that's been mined around uh, coal sites in the Latrobe Valley, in the Hunter Valley and the like. All the transmission infrastructure is there, so it's, all, all, it's already there. It's part of the landscape. And if you retrofitted uh, nuclear power stations there, you obviously have clear land around it because people haven't built in, in, in those areas and people have tried to stay away from them because they're not very attractive places to live next to, coal-fired power stations or coal mines. So it's the perfect location to put these at, at low cost, whereas if we go for the renewables, apart from all the other problems, you're going to have to run massive uh, transmission lines through areas where people aren't going to want them. I think that's absolutely right. <clears throat> the benefit of the old coal sites, of course, is that the infrastructure is there. But the other important thing is that the high-quality jobs and those communities will not be affected by the closure of those plants. Now, everybody agrees those plants must be closed. But even with the plan that AEMO has now, um, right out in 50 years' time, they still want gas power to actually protect the grid from all the intermittent renewables. So I do not understand how Australia is choosing to have a plan where in 2050 we will still have gas on the grid, 9 gigawatts according to the latest plan, and we won't look at lowest uh, cost, lowest carbon, reliable and effective nuclear power. Now, just one other thing, AD, is uh, personal expertise. Now, we're going to nuclear-powered uh, submarines in the future. We want to consider a new domestic nuclear energy model. You obviously got your training in South Africa. I've met some of your colleagues who got tra training through the UK uh, nuclear energy industry. Does Australia need to develop expertise and quickly to, so that we are capable of, of ramping up a, a domestic nuclear power energy, uh, industry? Absolutely. I think expertise development is absolutely essential. I also believe that if we do have a, a nuclear power submarine program, that we should have nuclear power training reactors on land. And so in any event, if we do have a proper nuclear power, a nuclear submarine program, it will be essential to change the law to have a power generator on land so we can train people in Australia. So I think the, the important thing to think about is if we can have um, our defence personnel in submarines next to nuclear reactors, what is the residual fear of not having safe, low-carbon reactors on the land in Australia, uh, helping defend the communities who for years have given us coal-based energy? It just doesn't seem to add up to a compelling logic that we are prepared to defend ourselves uh, by using a nuclear-powered submarine but we are not prepared to power our own homes and societies uh, using the cleanest, lowest cost, most reliable form of energy once you take everything into account. Just makes so much sense, AD. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you very much. AD Patterson, who used to run ANSTO, which of course runs that medical nuclear uh, reactor at Lucas Heights, uh, south of Sydney. He makes such a good point there, doesn't it? We're going to have these nuclear power submarines. They're going to be coming into Australian ports. And it's good enough for them to be safely powered and coming into our ports and Australians working on them, yet we wouldn't actually put some of them in uh, where we've had uh, coal-fired uh, power stations in the past. It doesn't make sense. In fact, all the experts globally, including the International Energy Agency, say we cannot get globally or in this country to net zero by 2050 without nuclear power.